For this topic, we want to look at inserting a recurring task. And I want to make sure that I, I know where I am in the list before I go in and start to, to insert this recurring task. So I'm going to click right under the scope, right here on task number two. And again, I'm going to be on the task tab and I'm looking for the insert area and the task drop down. And notice there's an option for me to insert a recurring task. So I'll just hover over that and then click on recurring task and what you're going to get is a dialog box that is looking for you to put specific information about the recurring task and so this can be very useful when you're setting up things like status meetings and other types of recurring events within your your project so I'm going to go ahead and type in status meeting here and I'll hit the tab key to just get me over to the next to the next item there which is duration and this is an interesting um, cell because what it's looking for is the duration of the meeting um, in this particular case that I'm setting up. So it defaults to duration, which doesn't really make sense for the majority of your meetings, right? Because they're going to be much shorter. They're not going to take up the whole day, hopefully. Um, so we can shorten this, right? And it's always been duration. Maybe at some point they'll change that or or they'll uh, they'll represent this a little bit differently here, but you can easily just simply type mm -hmm. in one H here to represent your one hour your one hour meeting or whatever mm -hmm. uh, whatever it happens to be. Now underneath that, you'll notice is the recurrence pattern, right? And so you can see daily, weekly, monthly. So let's say I have a weekly meeting and we're going to be meeting every Friday. And so you'll notice that you get some different options, maybe every uh, two weeks on a particular day, whatever the case may be. Now, at this point, I can put in the, the range of the occurrence in terms of when it's going to start and finish. And a lot of times you don't have this information yet. And I'm going to show you how you can edit this after you create it. So you don't have to worry too much about how many meetings you're actually setting up in this particular case. Um, so you can, you know, reset this and change this at a, at a later point. So if I think that, you know, roughly this is going to be, you know, we're saying it's starting in January. I'll go ahead and just push it forward here. Say we're going to go to like the end of March, right? And so I can always come in here and extend this or I can change it to be a certain number of occurrences um, at any later point. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK there and it sets up all of those meetings and you'll notice that it indents them and we'll talk about this uh, more as we go through this this training about how we set that up but you'll notice that in this case for a recurring task it's going to right group them in this manner here and so I'll grab the split bar and move this over so that you can see that so each of these instances is a meeting, right? So you have status meeting 1 through 12 because we told it that we were going to end at a particular, on a particular date, right? In this case, 325. So notice that it just sticks it right there. And so I'm going to grab this split bar and pull this back over. And so just so you know, each of these individual meetings can be modified and can be edited. Um, as you need them to be. So you can move them around, right? You'll notice that if I rest my pointer right on a particular block here within the timeline, that I can shift this, right? Because this is meeting on the Friday that we told it to be in the morning, right? As soon as it is the, the start of the day, you're going to get this indicator, right, telling you that. But let's say on this particular week, we wanted to shift that, I can take it back to being on that Thursday and it allow me to do that without any any problems okay now I'm going to double click on the status meeting itself because I was telling you that you can go in and adjust the recurring task information easily and this is how we do it by just simply double clicking so you can get back into the recurring task information and tell it well you know what I don't think it's going to be 12 instances I think it's going to be more than that so I'm going to go ahead and change it to end after 15 occurrences and then it just adds those individual items and again these can be edited if I go into this status meeting um, it's a task so it's treated uh, the same way task information right um, in this case notice that these do not have predecessors in them okay but they do have a constraint 
and we'll talk more about constraints as we work through this course, but these are falling on a particular date. Okay, start no earlier than constraint is being applied to these individual meetings, but we'll learn a little bit more about that later on.